Hi, my name is Adam. I'm a geometry student of Dr. Misseldines at SUU, and today we're going to be talking about something called Fano geometry. Whenever you have a new geometry, you want to take a look at the axioms and really internalize those because those are your new rules defining your geometric universe, right? So the axioms we have for Fano geometry, axiom one, there exists at least one line. Axiom two, there exists exactly three points on every line. Axiom three, not all points lie on the same line. Axiom four, for each two distinct points, there exists a unique line containing both of them. And axiom five, all lines intersect, or at least there are no parallel lines. All right, so let's take a look at what theorems we can prove in this geometry. So here's the axioms up in the corner for reference. The first theorem we're gonna prove in this geometry is that two distinct lines intersect in exactly one point, okay? So let's go ahead and let L and M be two distinct lines. All right, L, M. By axiom five, we know that all lines intersect, so there's at least one point of intersection for L and M. We're gonna put that right there. We call it P. All right, by way of contradiction, let's suppose that there's another point of intersection, because we're trying to prove there's exactly one. So let's say there's two of them. Okay, might look something like this. We'll call this one Q. So L and M intersect at both P and Q. However, this violates axiom four, which says that for each two distinct points, there exists a unique line containing both of them. Because for these two distinct points, P and Q, there exist two distinct lines, L and M, that contain both of them. So this can't happen. Therefore, there exists at least one intersection of two distinct lines, and there exists no more than one intersection of two distinct lines. So there's exactly one. All right, so theorem one has been proven. Now let's prove theorem two. There exists exactly seven points in seven lines. Now to do this, we're gonna construct the geometry. Okay, we're gonna do it axiom by axiom. So the first axiom says there exists at least one line. So let's draw a line. And we're trying to show that there are seven points in seven lines. So let's number the lines. This line will be L1. By axiom two, there exists exactly three points on every line. So let's put three points on this line. We'll call them A, B, C. Okay, by axiom three, not all points lie on the same line. So there must be some point up here. Let's put it up here and we'll call it D. It's not on L1, okay. By axiom four, for each two distinct points, there exists a unique line containing both of them. So there must be a line L2 that has A and D, L3 that has B and D, and L4 that has C and D. Let's write those in L2, L3, and L4. So the question is, how do we know that L2 and L3 aren't the same line? Well, if L2 and L3 were the same line, then they would both have A and D on them. All right, that would be two distinct lines that both have A and D, and that would violate theorem one. And it would also violate axiom four. So that can't happen. So these lines are all distinct. We can, by similar reasoning, show that L2 is not L4 and L3 is not L4. Okay, let's go back to axiom two. There exists exactly three points on every line. So there must be a third point on this line, on this line, and on this line. And we'll call them E, F, and G. So how do we know that E and B are not the same point? Why couldn't L2 be A, B, D? Well, if L2 is A, B, D, then L1 and L2 would both have a, B on them, and that would violate theorem one, which says that two distinct lines intersect in exactly one point, because that shows two points where L1 and L2 intersect. So E and B can't be the same um, point, 
Likewise, E and F can't be the same point because L2 and L3 would intersect at two points because they both intersect at D already. And you can show the same thing by similar reasoning for all of the cases, F and B, G and B, G and F, any case. All right, so therefore these points are on these lines, L2, L3, and L4. All right, but axiom four, we know that for each two distinct points, there exists a unique line. So there must be a unique line that has A and F, right? So axiom five says all lines intersect. So this line, L5, that we just constructed, must intersect L4 at some point. So they have to share a point is what intersection means. So it can't be D or else L2 and L5 would have two distinct points that they intersect at and that would violate theorem one and likewise it can't be C so it must be G because this line L4 only has these three points on it. So it's almost a method of exhaustion to show that it has to be G. By similar reasoning, there has to be a line from C to F and you can show with that exhaustion method, method that that has to go to E because it has to intersect L2. And we'll call this line L6. All right, so let's take stock. So far we have six lines. We just wrote the sixth one and we have seven points. So the question is, where is the seventh line? We're trying to prove there are exactly seven lines. Well, by axiom four, there has to be a unique line from with E and B. All right, but this line has to intersect L4 as well. Therefore, it can't be at D or C, or that would either conflict with L2 or L1, so it has to be at G as well. We don't have any notion of straight lines, so let's just draw this weird curvy line connecting those three points. It fits all of the axioms, there are three points on it. You know, it doesn't violate the fourth one, it doesn't violate a theorem. So this is the last point, and it's a little lopsided circle, but it'll work for us. All right, so, so far we've showed that there are at least seven points, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and at least seven lines, L1 to L7, right? This last one we just drew is L7. So how do we prove that there are no more than seven of each? Well, let's do it by contradiction. Let's say there's another point out here, H, that we haven't explored yet. Okay, by axiom four, there has to be a line with A and H on it, okay? This line has to intersect L4 at some point, all right? But this can't happen because A and D already have a line, A and G already have a line, and A and C already have a line. So the only other option is to say, okay, this, that must, this third point here must be a new point in the geometry. But if that happens, you violate axiom five because this L8 that we just constructed doesn't intersect L4, among other lines. It doesn't intersect L7, you know, it doesn't intersect L6. So this line can't exist. So we just showed by contradiction that there has to be only uh, seven lines and seven points. All right, so let's erase this. All right. Therefore, there exists exactly seven points and seven lines. And this model that we just constructed is the only model of Fano geometry up to isomorphism. You can stretch points and lines and move them around, relabel them, but it's going to be the same exact construction. There isn't another way to construct this. And up to isomorphism means that this is the only option. This is the only construction. So that is Fano Geometry. Thanks for watching.